Mark Ebner. Welcome to the Gray Zone. The Gray Zone. It's a comfortable place. Why the Gray Zone? Well, I've been an investigative journalist for more years, more decades than I care to count. And around the year 2000, uh, just around 9-11, I realized that my career, such as it was, had taken a major shit. There was no more journalism. And now here we are in 2016. Where do you get your news? (laughs) I'm sitting here with uh, Carl Kozlowski, who's uh, assisting me through my debut run here with the Gray Zone. I brought my wife, Misery Loves Company, right, baby? Indeed. Michelle Scott. And... uh, we have Dr. Dave twisting the knobs over there. Good to be twisted. That's right. <laughs> Twist it up. Enjoy it. Chill. And so we're up here. Uh, geez, Carl, I don't want to give away your exact location in your uh, you GPS. You can say the building if you want. It's coordinates, fine. But we, we are it. high above the HMS Bounty. <laughs> and the reason why I say that, A, it's a just a classic, classic Los Angeles uh, bar, but also... Michelle, you might remember walking down Wilshire Boulevard one night. We were leaving our dear friend Christine's uh, place. And uh, Christine, by the way, she owns Miracle Mile Toys. Put in a plug for her. She's local. Local businesses. We like to support them. Uh, We were walking down the street. It was dark. And uh, we came to a corner not far from here. And we found this... uh, Garbage stacked up on the side of the street right down here in the Miracle Mile. And on top of that garbage were these plaques. They were uh, fake gold embossed Scientology plaques signifying that the owner of those plaques had donated to Scientology over half a million dollars. You remember that, Michelle? I do. That's right. And those plaques were owned by your neighbor, Carl. Gay Rabisi. She's the matriarch of the Rabisi clan. Oh, I've heard that name. Yeah, if you can help me out here, you got, well, Gay Rabisi's a, a, a talent manager. I, I don't know that she has many clients outside of her children. Huh. And who would her kids be? Well, there's Giovanni. Giovanni. There's a couple other ones. Marissa, right? right? Marissa, yeah, yeah. Marissa. It's an acting clan, and they're all Scientologists. And, uh, you know, long story short about that was, uh, you know, as I get a sense of place here on the gray zone, I'm thinking, you know, those plaques signified all that money that she, the the mom, had given as a benefactor of the criminal cult of Scientology. And why were they in the trash? What was going Mm -hmm. on there? So... I contacted my good friend Tony Ortega over at the bunker. Uh, People don't know who Tony Ortega is. Just put your Google to work and uh, go to his website, The Bunker. He's 24-7, Scientology all the time. And uh, he posted those plaques on his website and said, Hey, Gay, you want these back? (laughs) <laughs> oh my god, oh my god And uh, no response from the Rubisi clan uh, mm-hmm. Well, you know it's, it's, I want to say it's tough Being that Scientology guy But uh, for those of you who don't know In 1995 or 96 I was working for Spy Magazine Cutting my teeth as a journalist And uh, I ended up writing a... Uh, One of the first major exposés of the cult. I won't say it's the first because God knows there were people that came before me. Uh, But uh, it was called Do You Want to Buy a Bridge? If you want to read that story, it's on my website, www.hollywoodinterrupted.com. But basically it was just me wondering who these silly people wearing sailor suits running around Hollywood, what the heck was this all about? What is Scientology? Um, Well, the secret's out. Since then, my story came out. It was an expose based on my experiences in the cult because I figured the only way to figure this cult out would be to join, and that I did. And (laughs) um, I figured out they have a saying in Scientology, uh, the way out is the way through. What does that mean, the way out is the way through? How about the way out is the way through 
the fucking door. <laughs> Leave. Exit. Exit zero. Get out. It's not that easy, though, because you can't underestimate the power of mind control. And, you know, as much as I like to mock Scientology and Scientologists, they're all victims. You know, anybody in there. Maybe at the top it's a different thing because those are the people that are perpetrating this scam. President of the United States, head of Scientology in the person of David Miscavige. What's the difference? They're running a Ponzi scheme on their adherence. Simple as that. Anyway, we were just up on Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, we were at a very small but effective picket at um, the testing center. You know, that's uh, where the body routers, if you will, those Scientology people who uh, kind of try and steer you into their various centers around Los Angeles, they try and get you in there and uh, start working the con immediately when you walk in the door um, with the goal of separating you from the contents of your wallet. <laughs> okay, so we were up there on Hollywood Boulevard. There were a lot of OGs up there. Tori Christman is a woman who was in Scientology for 30 years. She uh, was assigned a daunting task by Scientology back in the day, and that was to disrupt... Fuck up and otherwise uh, do away with the critical forces that were starting to emerge on the Internet. And, <laughs> boy, she didn't know what she ran into. But interestingly enough, all the critics, all the people, the, the ex-Scientologists, all the people that hated Scientology to the core, they welcomed her. And instead of, you know, saying, eh, you know, you're in a cult, you suck, we hate you. No, they said, you know, we're, we're here to really help you, you know. And um, she found more love in the critical community than she had found in 30 years in Scientology. And she managed to get out. And uh, so she'll, she's one of the personalities that you will see at protests in and around L.A., if not the world. Anyway, we went up there to celebrate the 50th anniversary of anonymous operations against Scientology. I think you mean 10th. I just want to make sure. You said what did I say, 50th? Yeah. Let's be careful. Yeah. It's, I think it's the uh, the Trump years. They just It's like dog years. <laughs> I know. You know one I, feels like seven. And Dr. Dave, I'm telling you, man, I, I just, it feels like 50 years. Yeah. It's the 10th year since Anonymous launched an attack on Scientology. But I got to say, what happened was Anonymous was not to be trifled with. Why? Because you don't know who they are. Anonymous. And I like to say, in the future, everyone will be anonymous for 15 seconds with apologies <laughs> to uh, Andy Warhol. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, the, so so we're up there on Hollywood Boulevard at the testing center, and uh, we had the signs. Uh, Michelle was wearing a danger zone Scientology uh, sign around her neck, and we walked around and we informed everybody that yes, Scientology is a cult, and. Hollywood Boulevard on a Saturday afternoon, you're going to see a lot of traffic coming by the testing center at the corner of Highland and Hollywood Boulevard. And everybody was already like, yeah, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, we know. Flipping off the building, flipping off the people inside. It was like the secret is way out. But back 10 years ago, Anonymous was particularly perturbed by how Scientology deals with what we like to know as free speech. Right, Carl? Yeah. Free speech. Yeah. And um, what happened was a guy named, a longtime critic of Scientology named Mark Bunker, a.k.a. Wise Beard Man, uh, he got his hands on the infamous, and I think you all know what I'm talking about, that would be the infamous Scientology cra Tom Cruise <laughs> crazy tape. Oh, no. Do I need to oh, refresh that. you? Yes. Oh, come on. It was like uh, he's, he's up there saying, do you even know an SP? Do you, have you ever seen one? And he starts laughing maniacally, and he, <laughs> and he starts talking, and all this 
Scientology code language that was meant to be seen only by Scientologists. Now, if it's Tom Cruise or TC, as they like to call him, you know, they were all enamored of this gibberish. But any normal human being watching that tape is like, (laughs) whoa, 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 whoa. What happened to Tom Cruise? (laughs) Well, I'll tell you what happened to Tom Cruise. He went so far up in the levels of Scientology. I mean, I'm talking about beyond going clear or beyond taking a personality test or beyond uh, the pedestrian realm of Scientology. And he was way up there in the space opera realm. We're talking volcanoes. We're talking the evil Lord Xenu. And for anyone who doesn't know what that is, and by the way, if you're a Scientologist and you're listening to this program right now, if you've joined us in the gray zone, you might want to turn it off right now because I'm going to tell you a little secret about Scientology that costs what? Michelle, what is it now? $250,000, $300,000 to get to the upper levels? That's all? Depends on how long it takes. It can maybe take a million dollars. Yeah, Jeez. you know, yeah, it, it's like however much they can milk you for, I would say, is probably the answer to that. Sort of the Capital One of religions. What's in your wallet? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so they get up to these levels whereby they learn the secret. And the secret, I think if, you know, I can tell you right here in shorthand, it is uh, what, uh, how many million years ago, 50 million years ago on the planet Tijiak, otherwise known as Earth, the evil Lord Xenu, came down on a DC-3 bomber. That's 50 million years ago, by the way. He, at least he was uh, flying a sturdy ship. I mean, I think they, you know. And um, basically, he dropped these hydrogen bombs into a volcano on the island of Las Palmas. Not Las Palmas Boulevard up here in Hollywood. Not uh, some fictional island of ill repute. No, the island of Las Palmas, otherwise known as Hawaii, because yeah. they got volcanoes there, right? Yeah. And so anyway, he, Zenu dropped these bombs into the volcanoes. He exploded the volcanoes. And what came out of those volcanoes were engrams. These evil little, uh, someone described me, I asked, you know, I asked an ex-Scientologist when they got to the engram thing, I said, can you describe what an engram looks like? And that person said, like, like raisinets. And I was like, oh, okay, those little (laughs) turds you're seeing all over your body, you're going to have to get rid of them. So anyway, Xenu infected the world. And the point is, when you get to the high levels of Scientology, you have to audit away those engrams, because they will destroy you spiritually otherwise. So, sounds crazy, doesn't it? We might want to explain to people what auditing is, um, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, auditing, what does it really mean? What is auditing, to audit, to audit a class? You go into a classroom, you audit, you listen. I think that is the derivation of the word. It's, it means to listen, but the point of the matter is, it means to spill your innermost secrets to Scientology that they duly record into their archives so that at the end of your road, they have, well, l- l- let me just get right to the point. Let's uh, John Travolta, for God's sakes, they have a dossier of every dick he sucked, okay? And if he ever tried to leave Scientology, I promise you, I promise you, they would have no problem whatsoever releasing that dossier on poor John Travolta. Not, so, not that I want to do their work for them, but uh, if they are blew- going to, uh, no, I'm just saying uh, maybe a coffee table book. I think that's the, the proper format for something like that. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say. T- <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say you were either moonlighting as uh, John Travolta's masseur. <laughs> I, I have no connection. Uh, just, just just thinking, you know, putting it out there. The Dianetics is such a big seller. You want to you want to compete with that within the same house. Coffee table book. Every dick sucked by Travolta. There it is, <laughs> and it's all dick pics with little captions. On <laughs> wow, very good. Uh, so, fifty years of anonymous. Now, um, ten, ten, ten years. years. Uh, God, it, it still feels, feels like it 50. still feels like fifty. Ten years of. 